Right, let's give him a hug. <laughs> Just knock the ironing board. Hello. Hope you're all doing okay. So it's reading time with Kate, part six. Okay. So we are on chapter twenty-six, Hot Pursuit, and. Um, sorry, bear with, bear with, bear with. I think I've lost, have you on that one? Sorry, sorry. So, um, yeah, so, um, Frank, sorry about that. So, Frank is, was on top of the car and Dad has begged Frank to get into the car um, because um, there were police cars or um, it's the fuzz is what fingers calls the police okay so that is where we are at okay just yeah chapter 26 never stick your bottom out of a car window if you have to stick your bottom out of a car window for whatever reason make sure you are wearing something warmer than pajamas that is because there is a very real danger you will develop a condition called bottom freeze. This is when a person's bottom temperature descends to danger levels. Bottoms can get so cold they actually turn blue. In very serious cases, frozen bottoms have been known to crack or even snap off. Bottom freeze can be brought on in a number of ways. So remember that guys, <laughs> don't have your bottom hanging out of a car window with only pyjamas on. So bottom freeze can be brought on in a number of ways. Doing a number two in an igloo, sticking your bottom in a freezer, so try not to do that. Trying to melt a snowman using only the heat from your naked bottom. Attempting to catch a polar bear in the Arctic using your bottom as bait tobogganing on your bare bottom, accidentally sitting on an icicle, this can be painful too if the icicle is sharp, cryogenically freezing your bottom so it will live on for future generations, mistaking an iceberg for a nice comfy sofa, becoming trapped under an out of control Mr Whippy machine. So just try not to do any of those things and then you won't get bottom freeze. Frank's bottom was becoming dangerously cold as Queenie flew through the town with the police car in hot pursuit. Dad pulled his son into the car and the boy shuffled across his father's lap before crawling into the back seat next to Thumbs. The gorilla of a man stared at the small boy. Good evening, said Frank. Not sure what to say to this brute. Hello. Right, me and technology don't work. So, I had just videoed, recorded myself, well, thought I was recording myself, reading half an hour, and it cut out three minutes in. So, can I just check on record? I don't know what I've done differently. No, I'm just recording. Oh, technology. So, I've got to read it again. <laughs> right. No, it isn't, replied the big man. Thumbs looked out through the back window. The one police car had become three. They were, ga they were gaining on them. Nino, Nino. Throw the boy out, ordered Thumbs. He's slowing us down. In fairness, I think you might weigh a tiny bit more, said the boy. If this was designed to lighten the mood, it backfired badly. Are you calling me fat, growled Thumbs. No, but you do weigh more. Stop bickering in the back, ordered Fingers. He started it, replied Thumbs. He's picking on me for my size. Shut up and hold tight, said Dad as they whizzed round the corner. They had now reached the outskirts of town. Where on earth are you going? demanded Fingers. This isn't the way to the governor's mansion. I know, I thought we could take a little shortcut. 
Dad turned the steering wheel sharply and the car started going up some steep steps. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Where are you taking us? shouted Fingers as his long fingers gripped onto his chair. We are going to lose them, said Dad. Queenie crashed through a barrier and suddenly they were on the pitch of a football ground. The three police cars were still in hot pursuit. Nino, Nino. The mini came to a halt in the dead centre of the pitch. The three police cars fanned out and stopped too. A voice came over a loudspeaker on top of one of the police cars. Oh no. This is Sergeant Scofe. You remember the man left by the well in the park with his pants? He must want his trousers back, said Frank. Give yourselves up. We have you surrounded. Who fancies a game of football, announced Dad. Chapter 27. Sounds good, Dad, replied Frank. Roar! Queenie sped off up the steps into the stand where the spectators sit. Bonk, bonk, bonk. One of the police cars gave chase. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Shift over, shouted Dad to Thumbs. The henchman did what he was told and slid over to Frank's side of the car. Then Dad turned the steering wheel sharply and put the Mini onto two wheels. It just fitted through the gangway between the rows of seats. Frank was squashed by having this man mountain on top of him, but didn't feel this was the right moment to complain. The police car giving chase behind ploughed through the seats. Nino, Nino! The seats flew up into the air and smashed into the windscreen of the police car. The driver could not have been able to see where he was going because the police car smashed straight into the giant TV screen. Crash! The, po the police car dangled out of the screen like a film in 3D. One down, two to go, said Dad. He turned the steering wheel sharply and Queenie, there we go, there's the car. Just gonna check it's still filming. Oh, I'm still filming. It's filming. See, there's the car. There's the car. It's gone into the screen. The police car. And Queenie went up onto two wheels and bumped down the stairs. Bonk, bonk, bonk onto the pitch. The two remaining police cars were waiting on the far side. They surged forward towards the mini at terrific speed, tearing up the grass. The mini surged forward too. The cars were hurtling towards each other across the pitch. This was a dangerous game of chicken. Who would crumble first? Ah! Screamed Fingers. He closed his eyes as the police cars headed straight for them. Make it stop! Bald thumbs. Frank looked at the beast of a man who was close to tears. If someone didn't slam on the brakes, there would be a head-on collision. Dad held his nerve. He was a champion banger racer after all, waiting until he could see the whites of the policeman's eyes. He yanked onto the handbrake and spun the car round wildly on the spot. No! cried fingers and thumbs. The two police cars turned sharply. One turned too sharply and ended up on its roof, skidding across the pitch. Dad expertly took the mini out of its spin and nudged the upside down police car into the back of the net. Go! shouted Frank. Now there was just one police car standing. Do you think Dad's going to win? Chapter 28, A Mighty Duel. Queenie sped around the pitch and the police car chased her on the inside. They did lap after lap after lap. Round and round they raced. It was like the, two, the last two cars left in a banger race. Frank saw that one of the officers in the police car was Sergeant Scope. The policeman had a wild look in his eye and was leaning out of the window, his comb over, flapping in the breeze. He was shouting orders to the officer driving the car. Faster! Faster! Go! Go! Scope stared into the mini. The two robbers had their faces squashed by ladies' tights. But Frank and his father didn't have any form of disguise. The boy panicked. Would Sergeant Scope recognise him and Dad? Thunk! Dad bashed the mini into the police car and sent it spinning towards the girl. Somehow the police officer driving managed to regain control of the car and stopped just short of the goal line. Screech! Dad put his foot down on the accelerator and powered straight towards the police car. The bonnets of the two cars bashed. Clunk! It was like two buffalo locking their heads together in battle. Engines, thun engines thundered. Roar, wheels spun, whiz, metal crunched, cru crunch, 
there was a mighty duel. All of a sudden, it seemed as if Dad was losing. The police car was surging forward, pushing the Mini backwards. Frank looked up at the policemen, staring in at them. Their faces were lit up with glee. They were winning, or so they thought. What are you doing, Gilbert? shouted Fingers. They've got us, you idiot, yelled Thumbs. Or have they, said Dad. In a flash, he threw the Mini into reverse. Frash, frash, sorry. Frank looked out of the rear window. Now they were going backwards towards the goal. The police car accelerated. Just at that last moment, Dad turned the steering wheel of the Mini sharply and the car spun round. The police officer driving was taken by surprise and his car ploughed straight past them into the goal. Smash! Goal! shouted Frank. Now let's get out of here, said Dad. The car sped off towards the gate. Father and son cheered as the car bounced down the steps. Bonk, bonk, bonk. But they weren't safe yet. Just as they reached the road, they saw a semicircle, oh no, of police cars ahead. Dad threw the car into reverse, but it was too late. More police cars came from behind and stopped in formation, bumper to bumper. The Mini was now trapped in a circular cage of police cars. A police helicopter hovered overhead, shining a spotlight as the Mini, on the Mini. There was no way out. So can you see? There's Queenie. And there's all the police cars. And there's the helicopter. Wow. Oh. How are they going to get out of this one? Surely not. Chapter 29. No way out. Give yourselves up. We have you surrounded. Came a voice over a loud hailer. It was Scoth. Standing at the top of the steps that led into the football stadium, the policeman looked a little dazed after his car had so spectacularly hit the back of the net. But at least he'd found another pair of trousers. <laughs> Even though this pair were too short for him, his outrageous comb-over was whipping up into the air as the helicopter's blade spun. The mini tornado it was creating threw leaves and litter spinning into the air all around the mini. The little car rattled so hard it sounded as if it was going to fall apart. Rittle, rattle, rattle. Dad gulped. Even the hardened criminal's fingers and thumbs were looking worried. Frank had watched his father race for years. He marvelled as the champion banger racer manoeuvred himself out of the most impossible situations. There must be some way to escape. Dad, you can drive us out of anything, urged Frank. It's too dangerous, mate. We need to give ourselves up. This is the end. It's all this little runt's fault for slowing us down, snarled Fingers. I want to rip his head off and use it as a football, growled Thumbs. Despite becoming distracted by the unsavoury thought of his head being detached from his body, the boy was determined that they'd escape. Many years ago, he'd seen his father do a terrific stunt in Queenie when he'd flipped the car onto its back wheels. Dad, you can jump those police cars. No, I can't, replied the man. You can. Do a Queenie wheelie. A what? demanded Thumbs. You can't do a wheelie in a car, sneered Fingers. My dad can. Not now he can't, replied Dad. When I did that stunt, Queenie was specially weighted. I had this huge heavy barrel in the back. You've got a huge heavy barrel in the back now, replied Frank, nodding towards Thumbs. The henchman leaned into the boy. It looked for a moment as if he might eat him. That's not enough, mate. All three of us grown-ups would have to squeeze in the back. What are you waiting for? exclaimed the boy. Who's going to drive? asked Dad. Me, replied Frank. Frank's going to drive. Chapter 30. Sorry, can I just check I'm filming? <laughs> yeah, still filming. I don't know what I did last time. Chapter 30. Countdown. Ye have ten seconds. Or I don't use considerable force, announced Sergeant Scoth. 
over the loud hailer. He spun his truncheon round his hand, looking eager to use it. So they've got 10 seconds. You can't drive, said Fingers mockingly. What are you, 10? I'm nearly 12. Now do what I say if you want to get out of here. 10, came the voice. All of you bundle in the back. Fingers and Dad looked reluctant but did what the boy said. Nine! As the pair scrambled into the back, the boy scrambled into the front. Eight! Budge up! shouted Fingers to Thumbs as he squeezed himself onto the back seat. I can't budge up! moaned Thumbs. I can't help it if I have a big bottom. Seven! With all the three men all in the back and the boy in the front, the front of the mini began to rise. Six. Frank couldn't hide his smile. In spite of all the danger, he was now sitting in the driving seat of Queenie, something he had waited his whole life to do. Five. The boy put his hands on the steering wheel. He'd never felt so cool. Four. He reached his foot down to the pedals. Disaster. His legs were too short. Dad, I can't reach the pedals, shouted the boy. Three. I am going to throttle him, shouted Fingers. And when you have finished throttling him, I am going to throttle him some more, added Thumbs. Two. They had one second to go. Demolition Derby. Here, mate, cried Dad. Use this. The man pulled off his wooden leg and passed it to the boy. One. As quickly as he could, the boy hooked his foot into the elastic strap at the top. Right. Charge, announced Sergeant Scoth. He began running down the steps, waving his truncheon, a man, one-man crusade. The boy put his foot down on the wooden leg, which pressed the accelerator pedal. The mini roared forward with its front wheels off the ground. The car mounted the bonnet of one of the police cars. Crunch! The mini crushed the bonnet. Dunk! The back wheels of the mini rolled over the police car's windscreen. Smash! Spin the wheel left, shouted... Sorry. Spin the wheel left, shouted Dad. Frank did what his father said and the car started driving over the next police car in the circle. All the police officers leaped out of their cars just in time. Now everyone lean forward, shouted Dad, and all three men in the back threw their weight frontwards. The mini then slammed down on the four wheels. Bash! Frank drove over the top of the next police car and the next and the next. Crunch! As the mini zoomed over them, it left a trail of destruction. The glass in all the windscreens exploded as the Minnie's, Minnie's wheels rolled over the cars. Boom, boom, boom. Crunch. And the weight of Queenie crushed the police car's roofs. Frank had only once been in trouble at school for sneezing loudly in class. Now he was his very own demolition derby. There, can you see? There's Queenie. And there's all the police cars. Well done, Frank. Scope looked on in horror as the whole fleet of police cars was turned into scrap metal. As soon as Frank had completed his right his lap, his dad shouted, Hard right! The mini rolled down the back of a police car and landed on the ground with a loud bump. Sparks flew as the bumper scraped the tarmac, fizzled. Then the mini flew down the open road. Whiz! Woohoo! screamed the boy. Frank had never to his knowledge screamed woohoo before but this seemed like the perfect time. Dad looked on as the speedometer was nudging out of its range. The car was going well over 100 miles an hour. Overhead the police helicopter was giving chase. We're not out of the woods yet said Dad. Let me take over now mate. I can outsmart that chopper. Of course Dad. The boy tried to move the wooden leg over the brake pedal, but it had become jammed onto the accelerator. Dad! What, mate? I can't stop the car! Oh, no. Chapter, 20, um, chapter 32. What goes up must come down. The excitement immediately turned to terror as Frank realised they were heading to their doom. With Dad's false legs stuck on the accelerator pedal, Queenie was going faster and faster. Hold on, mate! said Dad, as he clambered over the back seat into the front. As he did so, his stump bashed Fingers' long pointy nose. Watch what you are doing with that thing, snapped Fingers. Sorry, called out Dad. He wiggled this he wiggled this way and that to heave himself forward. Frank swerved the car as it went round a roundabout, faster than lightning. 
This caused Dad to tumble back, his bottom squashed right into Finger's face. Ugh! Watch what you are doing with that thing, shouted the henchman. Sorry, called out Dad, as he thrust his bottom back onto the man's nose so he could launch himself forward into the passenger seat. Off, he cried, sliding down into the front of the mini. Still, the car just kept going faster and faster and faster. Frank was clinging onto the steering wheel, staring forward into the dark road ahead of him. He didn't dare blink. They now reached the countryside. There were no street lights. It was that real country darkness. The road had narrowed into a single lane with high hedgerows on each side. If there was a car coming the other way, they would all be... Right, here we go. This is part three. Um, I had to delete more things to get more storage. So, fourth time lucky of reading the last bit, so hopefully, let me just check that I'm videoing. I'm having a right nightmare today. Yep, it's videoing. Yep. Right, sorry. If there was a car coming the other way, they would all be done for. Overhead, they could hear the police helicopter still following them. Kill the lights, ordered Dad. The boy flicked a switch and the car's headlights were turned off. Now no one could see them and they couldn't see anything either. Soon, the sound of the helicopter overhead became fainter. I think we've lost them. Now, for the last time, stop the car, shouted Fingers. I'm trying, replied Dad. And he bashed at his own wooden leg with his fist, but it just wouldn't budge. Way ahead in the distance, the boy could make out something on the road. Something pink, something fat, something piggy. What do you think it was? It was a pig! Pig! shouted Frank, not sure what else to say on seeing a pig. How dare you! cried Thumbs. It must have escaped from one of the farms by eating its way through the hedge. Perhaps the sound of the helicopter whirring overhead had startled it. No, not you. There's a pig on the road. Run it over, said Fingers. I can't kill a pig, shouted the boy. You eat pork, don't you? Yelled Fingers. Yes, well then, you can run over a pig. Thumbs looked bemused. Fingers, does pork come from a pig? Yes, shouted Fingers. Oh, you learn something new every day. I've done it, said Dad, as he whacked the wooden leg off the accelerator pedal. He then scrambled down into the footwell and thumped the brake pedal as hard as he could. Screech, it was too hard. The car's back wheel shot up and the mini somersaulted through the air. Ah! screamed everyone as they flew for what seemed like minutes but must have been seconds. Through the windscreen, Frank looked down and stared into the pig's eyes. Both his eyes and the pig's were wide open with horror. Oink! The car was flying upside down through the air. Of course, what goes up must come down. The car skimmed over a hedge, skish, before landing in a field on its roof, bash. All four passengers were dangling upside down as the car skidded backwards across a field full of cattle. The cows were all lying down asleep until the sight of an upside down mini speeding along the wet grass rudely woke them up. Moo, moo, mooed the cows as they desperately clambered up to get out of the way. All four inside the car stared out of the back windscreen. A tall tree was fast approaching. Tree, shouted Thumbs. Yes, we've seen it, said Fingers. Slam the brakes, shouted Thumbs. We're upside down, said Dad. Oh yeah, replied Thumbs. Right. We'll leave it there. Sorry about the troubles with the videoing this week. I haven't had this problem yet, so hopefully it'll be the last time. So I'll leave it there, and we're on, I've left it on chapter 33 in Sulk. So, so far, so good. They've not been caught, so we'll find out more next week. Okay, stay safe everyone and I'll see you next week. Okay, bye.